Good morning. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our weekly quilt chat. I'm Andy, and this is True Blue Quilts, a place to enjoy, experiment, and excel as you quilt. This summer, we've been having the Summer Fun Road Trip Challenge, and there is a link in the description below where you can download a tracking sheet. This is our final week. I can't believe that summer is coming to an end. We're at the end of August. My daughter's been back in school for a couple weeks. I know friends um, across the country are sending their kids back to school this week. And in the next couple weeks, you know, traditional school start after Labor Day here in the United States. Um, and it just, it's been a really fun journey. So I want to continue our Tuesday morning quilt chat. So grab a cup of coffee, tea, get your water ready, and we'll just sit and chat. I know Brenda comments every week that she enjoys listening while she is hand sewing. And I actually need to get started on a hand sewing project as well. I've got a hexi challenge coming up for um, later in the year that I need to get started on and I've got some ideas germinating. Uh, so it's time to grab the needle and thread and get busy on that. So I'd love to hear where you're tuning in from and what your current project is. So drop those comments in the chat box and we will uh, continue our theme this week for the Summer Fun Road Trip Challenge as we draw to an end. I always like to mention different states so that you can check them off your tracking sheet. And then next week, I will give you details on how to submit those tracking sheets because we've got a wonderful prize basket with some fabric goodies to send out to the winner of our um summer fun road trip challenge. And the idea was to get you thinking about quilting activities across the country. So we've looked at different quilt blocks. I've encouraged you to participate in the Quilters Trek. If you haven't visited that website, it's a great summer fun challenge every year. Different quilt shops across the country get together and design different blocks. So you can visit all these different quilt stores. You can order online and get the block kits and make a sampler quilt. And I just think that's a lot of fun to get to know quilt stores in different parts of the country. And the reason we're dwindling down here and, and I'm kind of stretching for the these last few states is because I have not, I've traveled to a lot of states. I counted them up, up last night. I've actually lived in 10 different states in my lifetime and traveled to many others for vacations, for trips, you know, car trips across the country, that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, there's it's hard to come up with a quilt story for all these different states. But so the, the Northeast is the place that I need to go on a quilt tour. And I know there are companies that do that sort of thing. So if you've ever been on a um, quilting vacation, you know, a tour company type vacation, I'd love to hear the details of that Um my mom actually went on a cruise in Europe uh, that was quilt based. And that just sounds like a fabulous uh, trip. Um, and I've got another quilting friend who is going to be a teacher on a quilting cruise. And that is definitely a bucket list item for me. Um, so we'll, we'll see what the future holds as I try to get some more quilt teaching gigs. So if you are a member of a quilt group or guild or a quilt shop that would like some fresh content, uh, please contact me. I'm happy to present lectures, trunk shows, and workshops around the quilting skills that I've developed, which tend to, I put them in three different buckets. I've got my monochromatic uh, style of choosing limited color palettes for my quilts. I've got my uh, paper piecing bucket, my angle play bucket using templates 
to make half rectangle triangles that you can see with the meteor quilt along. There's some recent videos there. And of course, my long arm activities, which is, um, I've, I've got something coming up with my long arm skills. So I want to run that by you in just a minute, but we have to get through our additional states for the summer fun road trip challenge. And I noticed that I hadn't talked about Delaware. And Delaware is a beautiful little state on the East Coast. And my college roommate actually lived in Delaware. And I went to visit her uh, kind of as a reunion a couple years after we had graduated because she was stationed at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. And that is kind of the gateway location for a lot of our overseas troops. They travel through Dover. And funny story, actually, back from my Air Force days, we were doing an exercise in England and we had to bring you know, all the troops back. Uh, this is, you know, well before our conflict in the Middle East. So and we're flying back. Our The uh, jet fighters that I was working with were had already gone ahead. And so I'm bringing up kind of the support aspect. And we had some classified material on board the aircraft. And the way they packed the aircraft, they couldn't get the classified material off. And I am in charge and I cannot leave classified material just sitting on the airplane overnight. So we had landed at Dover and we were going to spend the night and continue the rest of our trip back to our home base in New Mexico the next day. Well, I had to sit guard on this empty airplane in the middle of the night on the runway. So that's my story about Delaware. Not, not quilting related, but um, just kind of funny. And I had gotten to see my college roommate there in Dover, Delaware. So I'd love to go back to that area under much better circumstances one of these days. Um, another fun kind of roommate story. A few years ago, there was a quilt sewing convention called Sew Pro, and I may, met a lot of other quilt pattern designers, shop owners, uh, sewists. It was a fabulous convention, and I put out a call for a roommate. You know, Facebook groups pop up in support of these type of things, and you chat with people, and you feel like you know them, but then actually meeting in person, and I needed to share a room. I'm a pretty easygoing person, so I reached out and just randomly connected with Sherry of Rebecca May Designs, and she is from the Boston area. So, hi, Sherry. Um, it's I have fond memories of our weekend at SoPro, and I love to see what you are doing. Sherry is a very talented applique quilter. Um, so our, you know, that's a separate beast. I do not do a lot of applique, but I have fond memories of my weekend with Sherry from Rebecca May Designs, and I know she is headquartered in Massachusetts, so you can check off Delaware and Massachusetts today. Um, some other East Coast states, New Hampshire and Rhode Island, go ahead and check those off just because. I have no connection to those states, but we need to fill out our checklist, so um, go ahead and mark off New Hampshire and Rhode Island and put those on your travel destination if you are trying to get to all 50 states in the United States. I would love to do that, you know, color in the map. Um, I've also seen those really pretty wooden frames now that you can put pictures in for family vacations for each state. So that would be a lot of fun to go back and collect those memories and really make it a life goal to visit all 50 states in this wonderful United States of America. And the last East Coast state I'm going to mention today is Maryland. And I mentioned that I was in the Air Force. So Maryland is home to our um, sister service, sometimes rivals, the U.S. Naval Academy. 
at Annapolis. And so I want to shout out to all the Navy veterans and the Annapolis um, Naval Academy grads. Um, we, we share a special bond as uh, those who went to college at military academies. Um, I like to joke that I did not have a college experience because it was uh, the freshman year is full of drill and learning the ropes as a uniformed uh, service member. And then, you know, you don't, there were hijinks, but not probably the typical um, hijinks that you would expect from college students um, when you are on a military academy. But they are lifelong friends. And, you know, anytime you go through a um, work experience like that with you bond with your teammates. And that's what my experience with my Air Force Academy uh, classmates definitely was. But and we touched on our these five East Coast states for the Summer Fun Road Trip Challenge today. Delaware, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Maryland. So go ahead and fill out your Summer Fun Road Trip Challenge tracking sheet for today. And let's take a look. I promised you some long arm uh topics today. So we'll talk about some different long arm motifs. The Has anyone done the Dream Big panel? I know there is a quilt along going for that and it just such stunning quilts and what a beautiful background to show off your long arm quilting or your free motion on a domestic machine. I don't want to exclude anyone. I personally enjoy doing my free motion on a Gamel Classic plus long arm. Um, very blessed to have that as part of my quilting toolkit. So I am, I have to figure out how I'm going to bind. You get, I use this fun blue background for my quilt and you can see some of the stitch motif that I used there. Um, I have to get this bound. It is a class sample. What I did for this was I used cheater cloth and it actually show, is showing up quite well there on the camera. If you get up close, you can see how my long arm stitches did not hit the printed pattern exactly. And I am not a perfectionist, so this doesn't bother me at all. I know there are people out there that that would drive them crazy that they see the marked lines, uh, but you can tell from the back, make sure I get that angled right so you can see the stitching, that that feather looks just great. Whereas if you were looking at it from the front, it looks like it's off the pattern line. So what I thought... I we do with this panel is actually cut it in half and then I would bind it so it's a two-sided quilt so that you see the printed part and then the backing you know so it would actually you know look like this when it's hanging up you see part of it with the cheater cloth showing and part of it with my backing and then of course you would be able to reverse and see the printed part on the other side um, and just, I'm wondering what you think of that as a class sample, because I want to show people that their practice pieces can become useful items if you just flip them over. No one will see the cheater cloth. That can be the background, the backing. Uh, and then just look at the pretty stitch motifs on your plain background. Um, I used a variegated thread for the front, and then I just had a plain uh, light colored thread on the back. Um, you have to give yourself permission to practice and discard some pieces. So that's why I'm not too overly concerned with how those stitches looked on that cheater cloth. If you were when I was learning to long arm, I definitely had practice pieces that I loaded up and just stitched. And then what do you do with those? So many options of what to do with your practice 
pieces when you are uh, getting used to free motion quilting or any type of quilting. You can use the, you can cut them up as hot pads, as dog beds, you know, any uh, type of charity item there that needs a cushion, uh, pot holders, you know, hot pads out by the barbecue, you know, just, it doesn't, especially if they don't look perfect, you obviously don't need to um, have perfect stitching on a pot holder or a hot pad that is, or, you know, it could even be a, a towel that you wash the car. I mean, who knows? Um, I also have an older practice piece that I keep by my long arm that I use as a tension test piece. So if I load a new cone of thread and, and bobbin and I need to check my tension, I can just doodle on this piece and I can go over it and over it and over it in different colors of thread and it doesn't matter. It's just a practice piece. Um, if you need to practice stitching out a new motif and you don't exactly have the line, the, how it lines up or the spacing, you can do that. You can throw another piece of fabric on top of an older practice piece and just stitch more. It's, it's fine. Just like we use those little leader ender bits of fabric under our sewing machine when we are chain piecing, we can use the same thing with our practice pieces off to the side of a fully loaded quilt. And when I say fully loaded, I'm speaking of my long arm. I'll load a quilt on the rails of my machine and then I have space off to the side that I could use a practice piece in. So your uh, class samples don't need to be masterpiece works of art. They certainly could be. As I said, if you flip those cheater cloths over, you could certainly bind that, um, finish it as a table runner, as a cushion. Um, and then with the cheater cloth part of it, that would be to the inside or the back of your piece. And you would just see the beautiful stitching. And remember the uh, 30 foot rule, or as uh, someone said recently, they are going to judge all their quilts with the social distance rule here in 2021, that six feet away. Um, when you are quilting on something, you generally have it very close to your face. You are looking at it up close and personal, and you see all those flaws and those tiny little uh, discrepancies in your stitch size or how that curve kind of took a weird jog and looks a little bit crooked. But from six feet away from that social distance link, you're, you just see the beautiful texture of your quilting and you don't need to be quite as harsh on how those stitches look. So I am going to uh, slice this up and turn it around so that you see both sides of this and we'll see how that goes over as a class sample at my quilt store. I'm just curious what kind of class samples you enjoy that draw you in for a new quilt class. Is it, um, I always wonder about the size of projects because I've designed patterns for bed quilts, but obviously quilt shops don't have the space to hang up a bed quilt as a class sample. And are you intimidated if you see a large quilt offered as a class? You know you can't finish that whole quilt in just a few hours. Um, so then should the class sample be smaller, more just as a, you know, one or two blocks that you might get done in class. Uh, I'm interested to hear your perspective, especially as I start to offer more online classes. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me here at our weekly quilt chat. I will be back next week. We are wrapping up our summer fun road trip challenge. So remember, you can mark off our northeastern states of Delaware, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Maryland today to um, 
fill in our 50 state road trip little chat here. And uh, I will see you soon. Thanks so much and have a great day.